while back, I remember I got relieved from mid-watch. <laughs> I come topside to get out of that stinging hot engine room. I open the hatch. I feel strange. <laughs> you know, it's hard to explain. I remember the sea was so calm and not even a ripple. Doesn't happen very often. The sight's unbelievable if you haven't seen it before. Can you imagine an ocean, an ocean for as far as the eyes can see? Just looks like a sheet of glass and you can walk on it. And the sky, not a cloud. Just freckled with tiny little diamonds. All my years of steaming, never seen a sight like it. Not a night like that. And I walked aft and sat down in the number four davit and watched our wake cutting through the glazed ice. And I started thinking of the kid. You see, I imagine there was this little boy sitting next to me. He was my son. <laughs> and it was so real to me. I could see him. He had these tiny pair of non-skids on and car keys and this little striped sweater. I remember it was blue. And he had one of my old watch caps. And it was cut down and pulled over his ears keep out the night cold. Yeah. You know, sat on the cushion next to me. And I had my arm around him. And I was telling him all about the sea and everything. I must have been over there over an hour talking to him. That's when I started making plans. See, I want that kid. Now I want my own boat. And that's why it's so important to talk to Hank. That way I won't be away from him for so long. I want my old beaten up house somewhere. That way it's cheap and I can fix it up. And when he's old enough, he'll go out with me. You know, on the on the boat. And his old man will teach him how to be the best damn little self. <laughs> And he'll have a great mum. Well, what do you think?